no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Luke. The things you do and the way you do them Leave me speechless Make me wonder What I hear people say I have touched with my hands I have seen with my eyes That you are a miracle working God Yahweh, Yahweh Yahweh, Yahweh, you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my praise. Yahweh, 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 you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my praise. The things you do. Things you do. Come on, sing it. Not the way you do. Make me speechless. Make me wonder what I hear people say. I have searched with my head. I have seen. Let's sing it again. The things you do, the things you do, and the way you do them, make me speechless. Make me wonder what I hear people say. I have touched with my hands. I have seen with my eyes. That you are a miracle working God Yahweh, Yahweh Yahweh, Yahweh You are worthy of my praise You are worthy of my praise Yahweh, Yahweh Yahweh, Yahweh You are worthy
are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my praise. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy.
come and raise your voice and tell him God I live to worship you
Bimbale de gauche, ça la 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 He has raised me. He has raised me. 
Behold! 
world not only are you alive but you are well you are breathing you are living you are standing you're progressing you're advancing the bible says we can count all our blessings one by one and know that god is good how many of us take time to count our blessings truly god has been good to us come on celebrate god celebrate god for the days ahead of you the worst has already happened i promise you that the greatest days are ahead of you the greatest years are ahead of you the greatest months are ahead of you the greatest weeks are ahead of you you must confess it from your spirit say i am progressing i am going forward upward and only standing and knowing how to get through this day cause nothing can catch you by surprise cause you've got this figured out you're watching us now
some time ago listen to this some time ago one of my spiritual daughters called me she was in Kenya and they had given her the worst news cervical cancer and everything was looking so bad I remember the day she came and told me papa I had preached that Thursday and so she sent me the message and I told she was in hospital so I sent her a message I preached that Thursday I said watch that one you'll be fine and I remember, never forget that day, something just came to me, she's called Kathy. When she brought me her results with no trace of cancer. I remember I even cried. Not because I don't know that God heals, he has healed many. But there are those moments. There are those moments, I don't know whether you've had them. Yours might have not been a cancer issue, but there was that moment you knew that you knew, except by God, you were not coming back. That is why some of us, when we worship God, some people don't understand our worship. And it's okay not to understand us. Because some of us have gone through things that normal men would have died of. I don't know who I'm talking to. Some of us have We've defeated things that science can, cannot ex I don't know whether I have a witness. Yours might not be a cancer, it might be something, but I'm talking about somebody who has gone through something. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not talking about that weekend headache. I, I, I'm not talking about the flu of the, of the season, no. I'm, I'm talking about people who have gone through a hard one that something happened in your life and you never thought that you'd be alive this day. Look at you. <laughs> that is why some of us, when we are worshiping God, Jesus told a woman, you know not what you worship. Some of us know what we worship. We know who we worship. We know why we worship. Because if it's, it's only God, there are people here. You're here only because God chose to keep you here today. No science, no family ties. You are not born from that family. You are not that connected, but look at you. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. This is what I believe. That today God is taking somebody out of some great trouble. I don't know what. But I know when God is about to do something. I know when God is about to do something. There is somebody tonight God is taking something so heavy. And it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of survival or destruction. There's somebody today. There's a what the Bible calls delivered by a great deliverance. <laughs> There's somebody tonight, God is delivering by a great deliverance. You might not understand it this week. One time I was in a Sunday service preaching in a church somewhere in Kawembe. And after service, the pastor asked the leaders to stay behind. And when they asked the leaders to stay behind, I was to be speaking to the leaders. And then there was this group of leaders that sat, and one lady had stayed in the group. And then as, was, as I'd finished, it was really a ministry thing. I had finished preaching in a Sunday service, and then we had this little group of meeting the ministers to empower them. And then I get this, this vision. My spirit was carried a few kilometers away from where we're at and an accident played before my eyes. And I see this young woman and a car had crushed her head. 
months, I come back in my vision, from my vision, and I said, you woman, do you know God has delivered you today from a great accident? So she puts up her hands, I receive, I receive, I receive. After that meeting, about three kilometers from that meeting, she was seated on a border border, those bikes that they carry people on. Those of you who are watching from across the world. And a speeding vehicle failed to stop. And literally, when the guy who was riding on the bike saw it, he tried to stop, but he couldn't. So his, the bike slid and they fell just under where the car was coming. And by God's grace, there was, I think, something like a capstone or something that held that car and the tire of the car ended on her head, just inches. Now, I don't know, I don't know if that woman is worshiping, whether she sings like, uh, she sings so diplomatically. I don't know whether, uh, I don't know that such a woman would worship God diplomatically. I don't know whether she would politically raise her hands. Are you following me, child of God? Some of us have been through such things. Do I have a witness? Hey. And he will deliver you also in the future. All right, take your seats and let's give the Lord a hallelujah. Choir, thank you very much. Hallelujah. How many of you are visiting for the first time? Wave if you're visiting for the first time. Oh, from my heart to you, you're welcome. I love you with the love of the Lord. I knew you were coming. That's why I got you exactly that chair. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you're welcome to Fonero. Kindly take your seats. Get the, the chairs very quickly. I want to bless our offerings and get into the word real fast. Psalms burning. Father, we thank you for the most generous people in the world. Supply all their needs as they worship you in their giving. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Nelson said, Amen. Today, I want to give a very important subject of question by many believers across the world. When I was a younger man and had gotten into the faith, entered the way of life of serving God, fasting, praying, giving, doing everything that I knew in the book to do. By God's grace, since as a child, as a contemplator, I want to understand everything. I seek out the meaning of hard sentences. I, my curiosity goes to everything that I see. I can sit next to a tree and look at it for minutes and hours because I'm seeing something many people are not able to see. But it has been a very helpful experience for me, especially when I got to know God because I hardly miss God in a place especially in the things he appears, okay? When he tells Peter, he tells him, for this reason have I revealed myself to you that you might be a witness and minister of the things that I have showed thee and in the things in which I shall appear to you. So there are things in which God appears. I can easily sense angels, even when they come, in the form of men. It's easy for me to connect to things. I'm very sensitive. I can enter a place and pick so much information. I can look at people and read their hearts and minds. It's, it, <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting experience for me. But again, it has come with so much responsibility and maturity in understanding the way of God. One time, a young man came to me and he told me that he had lost his relative and he was looking for money. And by the spirit, I knew the young man was lying to me. <laughs> now, now, you understand that kind of life? Where you know. And then, but you see, God has trained my spirit 
to carry maturity and responsibility in the things I'm able to see. And I learned very early that you don't have to say everything you see. Neither should you respond to everything because you know it. That's only unstable. We have people who are like that. They're so reactive, they're so responsive, they're so sensitive. You can tell by how much easily they bleed, even before people who didn't cut them. Have you been around people who, who express every feeling of theirs on some social media page? You're, you're, you've been around such people. Eh, somebody, you annoy them last night, and the next day, they put a status. <laughs> they probably have three or 2,000 people that read their statuses. But all of that is directed to you, one individual. But they must put it up there. It doesn't matter how old they are. Such people are unstable. Never tweet your feelings. Your WhatsApp status is a platform of the gospel. Not the, ex the place to express your frustration with your sister. The brother you quarreled with last week, you make a funny heading somewhere on Facebook. I'm done with people. What are you going to deal with, animals? Do you understand what I'm saying? That kind of person cannot hear God a certain way. Because they're too unstable to be entrusted with deeper thoughts. Because the way of God is amazing. You read the Bible and sometimes you see Jesus knowing what is in their hearts. How would the Son of God live knowing who was going to crucify him? I mean, he's with Judas every day and they're laughing. But he knows this guy one day is going to trade him. So for those of you who are maturing in the things of God, if you want God to entrust you deeper in hearing his voice, learn never to express your feelings, your pains, your emotions, especially in places where they don't matter. Or to people who should not be bruised in conscience by your indifference. I don't even know why I went there, but that's apostolic. I always help somebody. But where did I begin from? Why did I begin from that place? Because when you have the grace to hear God, you will hear so much. And if you have to be disappointed in everyone, you'll be disappointed in all men. <laughs> so when Jesus said that he committed himself to no man, for he knew what was in their hearts, that's what he meant. He knew what was in their hearts. He knew all men. But the maturity to know that this person is like this, but I have to keep up with them. So this fellow, so I said to God, but he's lying to me. The Lord told me, told me, don't even tell him you know he's lying. Just give him the money. So I say, Holy Spirit, stop his lying. His uncle has not died. Why am I giving him my money? He said, because love in this instance would pay every price to keep him around a little longer for I need to raise him. So I found myself giving this guy some money. I knew he was lying, but the bigger picture with God was that if those few hundreds of thousands, hundreds of, of thousands of shillings were to keep a man still committed to sit in the church and learn, I was willing to sacrifice it as long as the grace of God would allow and his instruction because he needs time to, to grow. And maybe just one day, as he sits in that meeting, something one day will click and he'll come to repentance. By then I've spent a few, one or two million. It is worth for his soul. You have to grow to that level. So, and when you become a parent, you understand that more. That there are things your children will do, and you know they're lying, but you say, okay, <laughs> let me keep the peace because there's a bigger picture here to save. And one day, if it's required for me to tell them that I knew you actually were lying to me, when that time comes, I give you heavy as it comes. <laughs> but before that, 
I would be willing to keep up with that one until God saves them. Because every time I look at all of us, I can count what God had to go through to keep you. Hey, auntie, now you are looking at the other fellow. No. Do you know how much God spent to keep some of you in church? What it took God to bear your madness. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, that's not what I came to build on. But I began that way because I felt in my spirit somebody needed to receive something today. I'm an unction minister, so I don't have this pattern by which I have to minister. I minister as the spirit gives. Now, back to our story. So when I was a young man, I used to think so much, and I, I, I lived with questions. Still now do have many questions in my life, and I've been very foundational uh, for the answers that I received by God. And then I ask, and the answers, then I ask, and the answers. And it's, it's been a good journey for me to ask. Not to simply ignore something that says, oh, I don't know that, but let me just let it be. No, I want to know. But one of those questions I asked myself earlier was why certain people in the world seem to have answered prayers. Like whenever they got to talk to God, they got answers. Easy. And then there were other people in the world who had prayed 10, 20 years, 15 years, 5 years, weeks and months, but they just never seemed to have answers. Yet I knew the common denominators. I knew that these people were born again, check. I knew that they were reading the Bible, check. I knew that they were prayerful, sometimes even more prayerful than those who I knew knew how to get answers from God. It became a very frustrating study, even for me as an individual, because there were certain things I had prayed over time and failed to find answers. So I, I started to think, God, do you favor some people? above others. Do you let certain things be because it's your will and then someday, you know, I will let her realize it. Okay, if it is so, then why don't you reveal that script so that somebody does not waste time praying about the things that they are praying for. And all of these are answers. And as of whether they are true or not, some of them are subject to scrutiny depending on the case. Because some people use these kinds of ideas to justify the delay of many things in their lives. And many times, these reasons given are not so. Why do certain people go on their knees and make one prayer and God hears it? And then there's another person for many years praying the same prayer. I was raised in a group of people who knew how to pray. I learned praying early. Very few people can pray the way I learned to pray. And I mean in the world. <laughs> I, I met guys who could pray early. So I, I knew people who could pray. And then the frustration got further because I knew a guy who would pray from 6 p.m. to midnight. Or who would pray from midnight to the next day. I knew a fellow who'd pray for 12 hours straight. And you'd hear him, oh, 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 and he's sweating, and then he comes out, you know, he's dripping with sweat. And I examine this man's life, and I don't see the fruit of his prayer life. I don't see the answers. And I knew people who just used to go in prayer and say, Father, please, and God hears immediately. <laughs> Now, if you've been a seeker for a long time and you've not been, you know, helped fundamentally to understand how the spirit realm works, you can even get mad at God. I know people who are like that. And then they make sentences like, from the time I entered church, it's like everything went south. south. It's like everything stopped working. It's as if hell opened everything that it was supposed to open at me. So now, I don't know, should I go back in the world? Because when I was in the world, I had money. When I entered the church, I became broke. And then I heard one preacher say, no. Because when you're in the world, you already belong to the devil. Now when you're born again, 
and you no longer belong to him, now he has to afflict you. So I asked the dear person then, what about the other people who I know in the world are born again and they are enjoying the Christian life? Does the devil fear this one who is broke and struggling more than these other ones who are praying? Because again, now you are saying that it takes more righteousness to suffer. You know the people who preach this funny doctrine that if things are not working, the more righteous you are. The poorer, are the more righteous. The, the, if you're sick, the more righteous. If you're struggling in your marriage, it's righteousness. It's an attack. Everything is... I had a friend once. <laughs> uh, uh, they bought equipment in a church. And then when they bought equipment, it wasn't a lot of money. If I even told you the amount, you'd worry. And then that person fell sick. And after they fell sick, I went to visit them and they said, you know, the devil saw the equipment. <laughs> now he's attacking us. Eh? In my head, I thought, <laughs> now when they buy for their equipment, when they die. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? But that was not true. That was not true. It was a lie from hell. But some of these doctrines that you guys go on picking on the way as you watch things on YouTube. Eh? You know some of you, your YouTube disciples. You hear and learn from everything and everybody. You cannot cipher, you cannot discern, you can, because everyone who speaks like the other one, they're speaking the same message. So somebody imported something. I don't know where they got it from, but they were convinced that the reason why they are sick is because they bought equipment and that that equipment was going to be, be more effectual in the gospel. And I thought, but Jesus didn't have a public address system and it was effective. Oh, I'm sick because I got a new job. If you're sick because you got a new job, now if you become CEO, that means we'd bury you. <laughs> so for God to keep you, he needs to keep you on that what? Per grade. Somebody shout fire. Far from me. So back to our story. I started to ask, why don't people get answers? So God took me on a wonderful journey. There are a few things, about four or five things that I learned. And I preached one sermon, I think, back in COVID. If I will refine for some of you who want to go back and study this. Because then I, I, I shared one point of that, how to receive anything that you desire of God. I think I preached a sermon like that in COVID season. And, and today is one of those other days I'm going to share another principle. There are about five of them. And, 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 and I want to teach you how to receive. How to receive. Because it's not so much that God has not given, but it's so much that we actually do not know how to receive. Many people are struggling with many things that are already available for them. But they do not know how to access these things by God. And then they go back to continuously ask for what God has already availed. And because they're, they're doing it wrong, they are not going to hear God. And so you hear words like, I prayed and God was silent. And you know why God was silent? Because he gave an answer, but you didn't know the answer. You, you could not discern what he was saying. And so you stayed in that season. Some of you have lost five years, six years, 20 years. Some of you should be carrying children now. The answer came long ago. Some of you should be in businesses right now. Some of you should be to the next level of life. But you don't know how to receive. Because even your prayer life is wrong. Some of us pray the wrong way. Hallelujah, somebody. I'll read for us from James chapter 4. Very common scripture. The Bible says in verse 3. I'm going to build something very beautiful out of there because I know many of us know this portion of scripture. It says, Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, comma, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. You ask and receive not. Ye ask and receive not. Ye ask and receive not. Because you ask amiss. Now here's a mystery.
when you understand what Jesus has done or what God has done by Jesus Christ and study the finished work, this is the one thing the scriptures tell us he will not be negligent to put you in remembrance even though you know these things and be established in present truth. That it's negligent on the side of the preacher not to always put in remembrance certain things concerning the word of God. But even in trying to preach everything new, I must always allude to the old language and principles. There are things that in life we will buy mandate, repeat constantly, but bring in different language, cast different directions and visions until one day some of you get it because I have seen people who assume to know what does not work in their lives. And this is the hard truth. If you're that person who assumes you know something but it's not working, you don't know it. I don't care whether you have a PhD in it. I don't care whether you have a master's in it. I don't care whether you have a t-shirt with it. I don't care whether you have a cape with it. I don't care whether it's on your wall, your WhatsApp, whether you don't care whether it's on your status. If you have not, if it is not working in your life, it's not yet a revelation. It's the function of your mind, not the conviction of the spirit. Because that's where the true vision of God is manifested. And whatever you cannot behold, you cannot manifest. So we have a trouble of people who assume they know what they actually cannot translate. Oh no, I went to healing school. Oh, so what did they teach? Oh my goodness, these guys have very wonderful courses. They taught, they taught us about how to heal the sick. Okay, so heal this person. Um, you know, let's first wait. Eh? <laughs> no, but you said you know. You went to healing school to learn to heal, this, to heal people. So why aren't you healing people? Are you following what I'm saying? You went to prophetic school, why don't you prophesy? It, there's nothing that makes me love. Like people who did, somebody tells me, I did a Bachelor of Business. <laughs> business Studies or something. So I'm thinking, if you studied business, you should be able to do business. That's, that's my world. That's my world. Hang me, do anything. That's my world. No, if a doctor went to study medicine and they graduate as a physician, don't they go to a hospital? Don't they operate people? Because they did a degree in what? In medicine. So you did a bachelor of business. <laughs> but you can't even run a mobile money business. If they put you at a kiosk, you drain it. You can't even sell soda in these Coca-Cola fridges. You'd mess up their accounts. <laughs> you can't even manage yourself. But you studied business. You even have an MBA. Huh? <laughs> Fire. Praise the Lord. May whatever we study be able to manifest in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that over you. Are you following? So, back to what I'm trying to tell us here. So, we have experiences, and I've studied lives many a time, where people say, oh, you know, I have studied this and I've studied that and I think this is the answer and they can even become answers to everybody except themselves because we've not understood. We've not understood. That's why I said there are things we are, if it would take so much negligence on our side as ministers not to put certain things in remembrance to you, especially when it comes to present truth. Pastors who are here, there are things you should constantly put on your altars. Because Peter had to do that. He put the word always in remembrance. Because these things will start to bring fruit 
in the lives of your hearers. Some of you, you don't know which sermon transformed you, but there was a set, every sermon breaks something. You might not be able to, but some of you can. There are a few of you who can actually locate and say, since this sermon, my finances changed. Since this sermon, my marital destiny was aligned. Since this sermon, my education was aligned. But some of you might not even be able to tell which sermon, but there was that one sermon that propelled you to the next level. That's why it's important to hear the word constantly. Because as you feed your spirit, you empower and build yourself for the next level in God. So when I was saying that, I wish we understand what God has done by Christ. For example, if you know that by Jesus, your sickness was carried on the cross, that he bore your sickness and carried your grief, that he was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities and the chastisement of your peace was upon him and by his stripes you were healed if you know like peter says who his own self bore our sins on what on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed should live unto righteousness the son of righteousness the bible says shall rise with healing in his wings because you carry the gift of righteousness on your life Healing is a finished work. If you know that, if you know that, and then you tell me that you're not going to church because you fear Ebola. You mean all the people who have suffered Ebola went to church? Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes I wonder what Jesus says when he looks at our generation. How he looks at Christians. And they call it being responsible. You're not responsible. Because Ebola can find you even where you are in your home. It can come through your maid. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you shouldn't take all the precautionary measures that our governments tell us. We should take all precautionary measures. But some things are, they are, they are beyond truth. Some things are beyond truth. And some Christians don't, they don't tell the difference. I know this might land me in trouble with a scientist. But do you think at this level I care? <laughs> I don't. But some of us have got to understand what Christianity is. I remember a couple of years ago, a secular artist by the name called Shaggy. Yeah? He had a show in our country, Kampala. And then he came for a show. And in that period, I think we had... Uh, an Ebola outbreak. So Shaggy came for a show in Kambala in the time when we had an Ebola outbreak. Then I know a ministry that had invited an international minister born again. And I was helping that ministry uh, to host that international minister. And that week they wrote us a letter saying, oh, we apologize. The dear man of God is not able to come in the city because we heard that there's a ball in your nation. So in my head, I'm like, wait a minute. Shaggy can do a show. But a man of God cannot come to save souls. Because he had, there was Ebola in the country. But that same fellow opens his mouth before cameras and tells people that Jesus heals. Such hypocrisy. Such hypocrisy. Such hypocrisy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You must trust God to keep you. Why should you catch disease in the presence? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us are that crazy. Because we take this thing to be true. Somebody shout amen. 
So back, back to what I'm saying. Present truth. Finished work. By his stripes ye were healed. Just to understand that reality. That going to a doctor and you're diagnosed with a disease, it doesn't matter how killer it is. If you have arrested your conscience to that reality, oh, there are certain things that don't shake you. Because God has built a certain edifice of faith in your spirit. You have exercised yourself for so many years on this thing. How many people on this ground are living with diseases that kill but they're still alive? And how many people have died of the same thing? Some people are carrying on this ground, but they are not. Many, some people have died of the same thing that is in your blood. But you're living by faith. You're living by faith. You're living by faith. Why? Because you're brought to remembrance always. Now let's go to this thing so you understand. Look at the finished work of Christ at the cross. You believe Jesus healed all your infirmities. Now, Whatever comes in your body does not change what Jesus did at the cross, nor what God said Jesus would do. Do you agree? So somebody falls sick. And then they go to God. And in trying to pray for themselves, or the person who comes to pray for them, they ask a miss. They ask a miss. They ask the wrong way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, when you study the Greek word in James 4, 3, where he says, you receive not because you ask amiss. The Greek word there, amiss, is kakose. Kakose means you ask miserable. Kakose means you ask sick. You ask diseased was understood so you ask and receive not because when you go to god you go as one who is sick yet by his stripes you were healed so you cannot receive your healing because you see yourself as a sick man not a man healed by the finished work of christ at the cross of calvary so two people go to, to god with the same illness and one goes to god like god you know, I love you. I help me. Because if you don't kill me, I will not raise my children. You see, some of you think eh, that you can trick God out of principle by, by, by becoming emotional. <laughs> God is not emotional. He is revelational. So this person goes, they said, I have diabetes. Help me, Lord. Heal me. If you heal me, I'll serve you. If God should heal such a man, he can only heal him because he's ignorant. Only. You know, the Bible says in the days of ignorance, God winked. But now he calleth all men to repent. You know what winking means? Winking means he realizes you, you don't know what you're asking for, but he says... Anyway, they don't know, let me heal them. Don't make it a standard of prayer. Some people from that day make it a standard of prayer. So every time they're in trouble, they remember, I remember the day I cried. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Let me go and what? Cry. You're like those people, they pawn funerals to cry. I saw one, he was crying. He was a good man. And they said, but the one who died is a girl. <laughs> Some of you are good mourners. Every time you're in the presence of God, and you think that by crying that way, God is going to move. And if you have noticed, you have cried for years for that man. But nothing is changing. You have cried for years for your son, but nothing is changing. You have cried for years for your marriage. Every time you're in the presence of God, why me? You see what I'm saying? Because at one particular point, Apostle Grace preached the truth and you didn't get it. God corrected you. Now you're not ignorant because you know, but you, you didn't understand. But again, you cannot judge heaven because heaven gave everything that you need. And so you keep in perpetual begging and begging and begging and begging and you don't see answers. 
And you start to think, I think the problem is my neighbor. I think it's my cousin. I think it's my uncle. I think it's the pastor. I think it's the times. It's the ages. It's my nose. No. Truth. When you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Now, listen to this. So somebody is sick. God says by his stripes, ye were healed. Now, whether you feel pain or you're in whatever state, dire or not, whether you can speak with your mouth or you can't, the moment you go to God, deal with him on his terms. Don't go sick. Don't go sick. Now imagine a man who is sick and then they enter the presence of God and they say, Father, ho, 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 ho. Yeah! healthy as a man can be glory to God mm, I feel healthy thank you because there is no diabetes in my body I am laughing at the devil <laughs> I cannot have high blood pressure I just came to thank you because no 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 I didn't come to beg I didn't come to ask I didn't come to plead I know what you did by Christ on the cross I'm just here to say what would I do if I didn't have Jesus to deal with this stuff already but oh I thank you father because you dealt with this by Christ, by your striped has healed, my body is in order, my kidneys are working, my liver is working, my everything is working. Glory to God, Hallelujah! And then you even put on some praise song and then start to dance. Ay 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 ay! That oh, who has understood what I'm saying? Because that man did not go in the presence of God disease. I feel so sorry every time I, I'm talking to people, somebody comes for counseling and you tell them, oh, hi, how are you? And I say, ah, things are not good. That's the beginning of the line. And I'm thinking to myself, I wish I can take this person for a few hours and open the Bible and help them understand what they just said. They've come miserable. They already carry a miserable countenance. And they're coming to God for an answer. Because they remember people in the Old Testament. Jesus' time was Old Testament also. New Testament began when Jesus was raised from the dead. So when you see, oh, Jesus of Nazareth, heal me. A man was screaming. Some of you think you copy those same lines. Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> heal me. That, that, that was the Old Testament. The New Testament began when Jesus was raised from the dead. Are you following what I'm saying? New Testament believers don't cry out. But I've, I've been to churches where people are crying out. You are going to cry out to God today. Makode, tell somebody you're crying out to God. A man cried out to Jesus and said, Jesus of Nazareth. He even pronounces it wrong. Jesus of Na Na Nazareth. <laughs> oh, heal me. So today you are going to, you are going to scream until Jesus hears you. Shout hallelujah. We are going to scream for our rent. We are going to scream for our fees. We are going to scream for our marriages. We are going to scream for our healing. You are going to say to Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. And so the person's prayer begins in a miserable, diseased, indifferent attitude. And they start, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, heal me. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? You understand it? Well, there are people in the world who go in the presence of God and they say, I am in your presence, glory to God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Woo. I feel your presence. I feel your glory already. Your power is around me. It secures my being. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. 
the same spirit that raised you from the dead is now resident in the inside of me. It gives life to all my beings from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! I feel it. 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 Glory to God. And then you start worshiping God. You, you get one of those summons that, eh? If you do nothing else for me, you have done it all. I, 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 I'm sorry. But you, what has God done for you? Oh, oh, you missed the point. God doesn't need to do anything for me, but He needs me to go that way. <laughs> he needs me to go that way because it's the only way I can understand what He has truly done. I don't need to see the manifestation. You see how many of you go sick? Huh? Somebody goes to service and they were fired from their job. And then they fall in a corner like somewhere there. There's somebody who was fired. I see them just next to that palm tree there. And then as they start worshiping, boo! Why? Why me? <laughs> For you, you're next to the person you're worshipping. You think they're being filled. <laughs> but it's a miserable spirit over them. Are you following what I'm saying? You see how people come in the presence? Just imagine, parents, parents, you know what I'm talking about. Imagine you're in the living room somewhere doing something. And then your child comes. <laughs> Sorry, what's wrong? Why? Because they're not making sense revolutionally. <laughs> By revelation, they're not. So spiritually, they're like... Oh, sorry, sorry. Keep quiet. Okay. Have some candy. And then they go back. Every day. I say, but why? What's wrong with you? Keep quiet. And in a few minutes, they're singing... Jesus, I say, my child is singing. Oh, <laughs> see, but why is this child always crying? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? You understand what I'm saying? That's how many of you are in the presence. But imagine every time your child comes and says, Mommy, <laughs> you understand? Every time they come in your presence, they're exuberant. They're happy. You see what I'm saying? I say some of you parents have taken children to hospitals and said, no, there's nothing wrong. But she was crying, but there's nothing wrong. You're connected? You thought about the child is suffering from what? Nothing. The child is 100% healthy. But they just, that was the day they just chose to what? Hey, to create trouble. Now, God has said, you ask miserable. That means if, if, if you have been fired, you're the kind who was fired, first cry, then after crying, clean your eyes, put on makeup, reconstruct yourself through someone, put on scripture, then pray. <laughs> One time somebody called me and they got a very bad report. I told them, first go and sleep. But the apostle, I told him, first go and first get some sleep. Then we shall talk when you have rested your mind. Because I knew if I get them when they are at that point, they're going to... You see what I'm saying? God, God says, do not come sick because I healed all your diseases. I don't care where they fired you and how they've taken your house. It's under receivership or whatever business of yours have gone and your assets are out. Come happy. As one who knew that the vote of your wealth is not based on what you have at that particular point or what you have lost. But it's entirely determined by what God did through Christ. For we know of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich. Yet for your sex, the Bible says he became poor, that you through his poverty 
might what? Be rich. Now, that's a true statement whether they fired you last week or not. That is true whether you have rent or not. That is true whether you have a property in this world or not. That is true whether you have clothes or not. That is true whether you slept hungry last night or not. And God is not going to change it and adjust to your indifference and ignorance because you think that it's going to be melted on your tears. No, he said, don't come to me. The Bible says, come to the throne of God. With boldness. Is that what Hebrew says? He says, let us therefore come. Give me the amplified version of that. Amplified. He says, one, two, three, let's go. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace the throne of God's unmerited favor to us, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every sum, for every sum, for every sum, for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Amen. Glory to God! Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. So you don't go to God timid and fearful and weak and miserable and sick, no. He said, come boldly. I'm going to pray for a sick man because I know a sick man is going to be healed. You understand the attitude? I'm going to pray for my marriage because this is the way I'm supposed to get married. Oh yes, please, yes. The word of God. I have somebody in this ministry, they were proposed to and the man told I'm going to marry you in two weeks. What are you talking about? You're joking. Say what? And they got married because God doesn't need edges. Glory to God. But when you when you learn to go bold, learn to go bold. Check somebody, tap them, and tell them learn to go bold. If you're on YouTube, type it. Learn to go bold. There is more than you can ever ask, and it's available for you through faith. Through faith. Oh, I know that your son has been on drugs for weeks. You've done everything you could. Don't go, but God, how long? How long? No. When you're crying, don't put God. Separate your feelings. Separate your feelings from God. Um, and cry alone. And then after that, clear your head. Sometime I was watching a documentary. I just realized it that women can cry for nothing. I didn't know it happened. So I started to ask the women around me, how does that happen? But I heard that a woman can just be there and feel sad. Just nothing as that. And they feel like they want to cry. And then they go and just sit there and start crying. I hear that it's a psychological scientific. How? How do you just be there and you feel like how long did I last cry? Hey, okay. And then you lock yourself up in a room. Then you start constructing sadness. <laughs> women, you can help me here. Some women just wake up and they just feel like crying. Uh -huh. Now, if you're that kind, hmm? don't have to involve God in your woman thing. <laughs> Who has understood what I just said? Do, don't involve God in your woman thing. First, go in your bedroom and cry alone. Then after that crying, you say, now, eh? Because why was I crying? Okay. Then, you come in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you know why when Joseph was in prison and then they had to bring him to the king to interpret the dream. The scriptures tell us they took Joseph aside first, shaved his beard, put clothing on him, then he went to the king. No, but the Bible says come just as you are. That's for sinners. 
and elbow somebody. That's for what? For sinners. People who are not yet born again, they come as they are. <laughs> but when you're born again, you come as a king. You come as a son of God. You come to the king of kings. You come as a priest. You come as a seed of Abraham. You come as, 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 as the word. You come, you come to God. You, you, you come as, as, as the be perfection of beauty. You come as a seed of the Almighty. You come as one born of God. You come as one born of the incorruptible seed. You come as one uh, who is a conqueror by Christ. You come as one who he always causes to triumph and makes manifest the servant of his knowledge by you in every place. You come as one who has a greater one in the inside than that which is in the world. You come as one with a treasure in earthen vessels and the excellence of power is of God. That's how you come. Somebody wrote a nice song and they said, I will enter his court with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with tears. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has. Now this is the mistake you make. You sing that song when you graduate. You sing that song on your wedding day. Oh, 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 oh. The Bible says, even in tribulation with glory. I don't know who I'm talking to. The Bible says, we glory even in tribulation. We glory. The Bible says that you should carry joy even in your trials. You should carry joy even in your trials. Re read Romans 5, re begin from verses 2. Read verses 2. Romans 5, 2. Uh-huh. By whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Listen, we have access through faith to enter this grace the Bible says, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. Next verse. And not only so, but when, but we also add, glory in what? Tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. Uh -huh. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not. <laughs> For us, we don't only glory when things are working right. I'm talking of the day a person receives a bad report. And then they say, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has met. Now imagine an unbeliever, an unbeliever looking at you. They even have your report in their hands. And you start, he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. The Bible says they looked as if they were drunk men. <laughs> and, oh, he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice. So they ask you now to prove that you have a problem with your head. Why are you singing? Now I, I'm the, I now understand why Paul says that if I'm in my mind, I'm for you. It's for you. But if I'm mine, out of my mind, it is for the Lord. Because I've realized when you become born again, some wires start cutting. Some of you, you already look strange. You can't fit in. The way you shout, the way you walk, the way you talk. You're already strange. By the way you act. By huh? here, they say they don't fall sick. That's fellowship. <laughs> 
But we heard that they are sick. This person says they are not sick, but they are sick. You don't get it. They are not. <laughs> they are not. They are just resting. <laughs> Who has understood what I just said? Why? Because the communication of our faith becomes effectual as we acknowledge every good thing which is in us, which is in Christ. So if you're broke, I don't care whether you're smelling poverty. When you go in the presence, go like a king. As one who owns the whole world and say, Father, I thank you because I'm in the spaces of wealth, influence and affluence. I know that the landlord is knocking on my door because the grace for me to rent is over. Come on, glory to God. As somebody says who bewitched me, no, the grace to rent is over. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say the grace to rent is over. And you think that a spirit is pursuing you. No, it's not. It's not. The grace to rent is over. I called my uncle, even the one who was helping me, they failed to help me. I think I have a spirit of, of rejection. No, no, no. The grace to beg. Oh, oh, oh. The grace to beg is over. The grace. The, the grace of living by another man's means has come to an end. That is a man who goes in the presence of God and starts dancing. And then they ask you, why are you dancing? And you tell him, hey, Uncle David Unji. Uncle David. Now you're singing, but you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You know those things that keep people at night awake? and they find you sleeping even river nile has crossed and made tributaries and they say but this guy is supposed to be worried no glory to god the bible says he grants sleep to them he loves <laughs> Woo! somebody said we shout too much I know I wish <laughs> because every shout is getting you out of trouble every shout is taking you out of pain every shout is taking you out of frustration every shout is healing your kidney every shout is repairing your liver every shout is building your marriage every shout is healing your child glory to God what God has done can stop being political about their praise any man who knows what God has done can stop being humble in their praise some of us that's why I told you when we start praising leave us alone because some of us are we are praising out of circumstances some there's something that must leave you but then you realize that Some of you, some things will never leave you until you do something whereby they can't identify you. And they say, is it this one? No, we are lost. Oh, somebody shout amen. Shout glory to God. Let me finish for only one minute or two. Don't go sick. Don't go poor. I know he asked for a divorce. But don't enter the presence of God divorced. Or in a, or in a divorce process. Enter married. Who am I talking to? I know they fired you last week. But don't enter the presence of God fired. Enter as if you are employed. Because 
Men who don't know the difference are sensual, they are carnal, they are lasting, they are not purposed. That's why the next line says that you might consume it on your own lusts. That's the only way you can know your carnal. Get out of your carnal self. Let's get to our feet. Never pray miserable. Tap somebody with your elbow and tell them never pray miserable. Don't enter weak. Don't go like a survivor. <laughs> You're not a beggar. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm laughing at the devil right now. He thought he had you. <laughs> Woo. Let me tell you, I am telling you things I've done. There are moments I get so overwhelmed and I'm like, Kaneya Wureko. Separate myself for a moment and go maybe at the rooftop and or in the bedroom and start dancing alone. I do that all the time. Sometimes, oh, my taller goes up, but I shorter. Sometimes when you're overwhelmed, start a victory dance. Alone when nobody's watching. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says, Why art thou downcast, O my soul? You remember the message version? He says, Rejoice in the Lord. 1, 2, 3, let's go. Psalms 42, verses 5. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Now, this was a man talking to a sad soul, a sad countenance, a miserable spirit. Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be what? Praising again. He puts a smile on my word. And he's my word. That's my point. I don't care how sad you came, the moment your eyes are fixed on Jesus, praising comes in your spirit. A smile comes on your face. And he said that sometimes when I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do, I remind myself of the things God has done in the past. Read. When my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know about you. From Jordan depths to Hammond Heights, including Mount Misa. Because this man is talking about the, all the mountains God gave him victory on. So when he's tired and sad, he goes back to that moment where God took him out and saved him from a great danger. And then he says, he just finds himself rehearsing. I'm talking about that moment when you will receive a, a report and start rehearsing how he healed you of COVID. And start rehearsing of how he healed you of that childhood disease. And start rehearsing of the thing he took out of you in secondary. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah! This man rehearses everything he knows about God. That's a man who will receive. That's a man who will receive. That's a man who will receive. Are you ready to receive something today? Now, identify the challenges that have stayed for so long. and open a spiritual gate right now and align yourself with a praising and thanksgiving spirit and address that issue as though it is finished from today. I don't care how many times you address it, but from today never address it into existence again. Open your mouth. <clears throat> Talk to God. You have done me well. You have done me well. 
you have done me well Jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well Jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well Jesus you have done me well raise your hands and speak to God and thank him because it is finished miracles are happening Jesus Onkoze bulunji Onkoze bulunji Onkoze bulunji Yesu Onkoze bulunji Onkoze bulunji Onkoze raise your hands in the heavens and allow me to declare some words father every hand that is up has declared today that your word has sunk as a seed and it's planted to produce fruit that will echo through eternity every hand raised up is telling you that we will never come to your presence seek again 
will never come miserable again. We'll never bring such stories in your presence again. We decree that the rest of the days of our lives are going to be filled with such victory that the world will see and declare that indeed we have a God and he still works among men. Give him a mighty hand of praise. Come on, not like that, not like that. That's for your local chairman. Come on, let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Oh, your hands look so beautiful. Hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, clap for Jesus. I imagine what heaven is thinking. When God sees you clap for him, he says, those are my children. My champions understand the message. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, as we all stay standing, no man should move. Even those of you who are going home, wait. Because it's selfish for you to hear the word, but you're not able to wait for God to do his work. Let's give an opportunity. I just need two minutes of your time. We need those who are here and they're saying, you know what, today I want to receive that Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Everything we have spoken begins by receiving this one person, Jesus, who shed his blood for you, who was raised for you. And above all things, he has promised eternal life for all who believe him. Now, if you're there and you're that person, come right now, I wanna pray with you. Say, today I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Come right now. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. I will not forget you all my day. In every, as you're clapping as they're coming. Come on, celebrate the greatest miracle. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. forget you I will not forget you all my day hurry quickly come come take this time and ask your neighbor if they're not born again you tap them and lead them here God of yesterday God of today you're the God of tomorrow the same Present hell and time of me in every situation you have named. Forget you, I would not forget you all my days in every situation. One more minute. You have never failed Yahweh, Yahweh Forget you, I will not forget you all my day. In every situation you have made. Now, those of you who are here, repeat these words after me. Put your hand on your heart. 
and say these words. I know you're the Lord's bride, but can you move a bit faster? There are people on live stream who are receiving Jesus Christ in the streaming centers. We are seeing you online. Repeat these words after me. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your life and your love. Today, I have heard your word and I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Today, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Put up your hands and I pray for you. Father, among these ones, there's been sick people. There's been people that have been tormented by demonic work. There's been people that are sick. There have been people that are troubled. Whatever spirit of infirmity, disease, or witchcraft, I rebuke you. Loose. 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 Help that woman with the child. Loose. Loose. Get out, you devils. Get out, you spirits of infirmity. Get out, you spirits of tormentation. Loose. Your spirit of witchcraft. Go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you for only two minutes. We want to meet you there. Say hello to you. Take your phone numbers. Help you understand what it means to be born again. And on Sunday, come for the second service at 11 to 1. But if you want, you can come in the first service 9 to 11. That's also okay. But I prefer you in the 11th service because it's a bit longer. And we have more time to catch up and connect. God bless you. I love you. The rest of you. Oh, we have GIC. We have a team from Tanzania. They're already in the house. Oh, they've come to, to, to attend. Uh, some, came, uh, some came from the US. People are here just to attend GIC this Saturday, right? Oh my God, it's going to be the biggest intervarsity crusade that I think Africa has ever seen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Starting what time? Midday what time 7 p.m bring the lamb bring the dead bring and that day come ready to pray put on your praying shoes put on your praying dresses put on those brown ones where you can roll and they don't know you are dirty don't put on white somebody said amen father i thank you for these children i thank you because you heal all these children and deliver them from all they're struggling with in Jesus' name, amen. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Your name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app. Available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at .org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Panero, make manifest.